And now I'm joined by the woman described in Boston.com and in the Globe as the public face of the opposition to expand the gambling, Kathleen Conley Norbert, leader of the group United to Stop Slots in Massachusetts. Kathleen, it's good to meet you. I read a lot about you. Pleasure. Uh, United to Stop Slots and Casinos, right? Even Absolutely. Though it's just, what's the, give me the two reasons, top two reasons why this is a horrible idea. It's a horrible idea because it's not economic development and because there are tremendous costs and impacts. What kind of costs are you talking about? The addiction stuff or the impact on other businesses? What do you mean? Um, both. All of it. And it's very interesting that um, the speaker refuses to have a cost analysis and that's what we've been pushing for for some time. I'm just the public face of a great team, people across the state, tens of thousands of people who know that this is a really bad idea. You know, we hear so much about the revenues, we hear so much about the jobs, but there's another side that we haven't heard about, and that's what we're bringing forward to our legislators. Who are those teams? I mean, you've gotten a lot of play lately, and people really like this notion of citizen actors. One of my favorite people alive is Ron Bersani, who single-handedly basically Great. brought Melanie's Law, the anti-drunk driving law. Who are the people behind this face? Who, who's on your side? They're, they're people just like myself. I mean, I, I have a career, I have a child, I'm a, you know, a mother and uh, other people working at home out of their, um, using their computers at home, people just like everyone else. We're average folks. We learned about the industry because either through circumstances like myself, I was a small town selectman, totally an unlikely um, champion to be going up against a billion dollar industry with really deep pockets. And we learned that it's really a, a, a terrible industry and it, it takes more money from the local economies and the regions then it brings back. Okay, tell me how many thousands of times you've heard this one. Uh, but listen, the reality is we've done the cost analysis and close to a billion dollars, if not more, I think it's a billion something, is allegedly leaving Massachusetts, going to casinos, racetracks, et cetera, whatever it is in Connecticut and Rhode Island. We, if they're gonna gamble anyway, why not gamble here? Sure, and, and that's a great point for us to talk about, but they've done the benefit analysis. And again, recently hired with taxpayer money, a benefit analysis by Spectrum Gaming. Now Spectrum Gaming will do a cost analysis if they're asked to do a cost analysis, but we keep seeing the benefit analysis and we haven't drilled down to look at the impacts for the entire regions that host it and we do our research. You know, we're folks that um, are looking at all of the studies nationally and we see Connecticut, we see casinos everywhere going under bankrupt, more bailouts, and I really don't think that the taxpayers are in the mood for more bailouts. What if a community or region said we want it? What if southeastern Massachusetts is having real trouble with jobs says, listen, I agree with every argument you're making, Kathleen, but right now we need whatever jobs we can get. We're willing to pay the price. We want it. You won't have it in Western Mass. I'll take it in my backyard. Well, that's a great point. And have you ever seen a legislation that was crafted on fast track out of desperation that was worth the paper that was printed on? You know, we haven't seen a full adult discussion of the costs and the benefits. And what business would go forward without looking at five years down the road, the market saturation, the costs and the impacts. If the public knew that, I don't think the people would be saying this is a good idea. You're quoting the Globe, I think, about three weeks ago, two weeks ago, say, I feel like people are being hurt a little more. I feel like people are being hurt a little less. If you're talking about the anti-gambling people, or pardon me, gaming, if you're in favor of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Bob DeLeo, Speaker of the House, sitting here the other night, explaining why there are no public hearings. There was a vote in the nanosecond in a committee, another vote sure. in another committee. They're going to vote on it next week. I mean, I am with you on this, by the way, but I have to say, if there was ever a losing battle, you've got the Speaker as opposed to his predecessor, who was wildly against this, one of the few good things he did. You've got the Senate president, you have the governor, they all agree on casinos, and it seems to me even if you can kill the slots, which I hope you can, the casinos are gonna happen, are they not? Well, Jim, you know, I've never met a challenge I didn't like, so we're gonna go for it, and we're gonna continue to work hard. We're working every single day up against the huge challenges of people that refuse to listen to the opposition. Now, the speaker also said he met with the opposition. Who? I wrote him an email. Can you tell us who it was? He hasn't, he hasn't met with the opposition. Yeah, he hasn't the met with our coalition. I think he shouldn't. Even and they're if not hearing us. But the reality is he doesn't have to. I mean, if it turns out his people, and again, I'm not defending it if what you say is so, mm -hmm. but you're the leaders in the past. If you were to say to me a year ago, Kathleen, who's the leader in the House opposed to this other than the Speaker? I'd say, Bosley. He's retiring from your part of the state. Who's the leader in the Senate? Somebody I've known for decades. Senator Tucker retiring. The reality is, if anything, it seems to me the people who've led the fight in the legislature, with the exception of DeMacy, who didn't leave voluntarily, are essentially almost tired out and given up the fight. Tell me I'm wrong. Well, no, I'm not going to say that you're wrong because those dynamics certainly shifted from the time that we had Speaker DeMacy with Speaker DeLeo. But what we have now, we went from a super secret slot bill, he pushed it out, and now it's a special, super special interest gambling bill. 
and it's being jammed through. And people know this. You know, taxpayers are watching, and we're not thrilled with some of the things that we've seen on Beacon You supported Hill. Deval Patrick, did you not? Didn't I you certainly work for did. Him? You met with Deval Patrick, I read, for like an hour. Deval Patrick is probably the champion of resort-style casinos. How do you square those things? Well, it's very interesting because it has been a challenge to square that, and certainly with his whole base. And if you'll notice, his behavior has been very different after his casino proposals lost. And again, I'll say those numbers, misinformation, horrible projections. They were so far off the mark. And the same thing with the current special interest bill, way off the mark. People need to know that the speaker is proposing no bid, sweetheart deals for these tracks. It's outrageous. We got to go. What's is there a website or some way people can get involved in this if they choose to? Absolutely. Call your it? legislator. Go to www.uss-mass.org. Get active because this thing needs to stop. Convince me, Kathleen Conley Norbert. Good to meet you. Thanks so much Pleasure. for coming. Good luck in your quest. Next, I'm not done yet, so stay tuned.